some exciting use cases for geolocation, right? I mentioned there's a lot of different type of data that we'll be collecting um, in the future. Everything from your vibrations of your phone that can count, be used to count steps to the images that you take, to the environments that you're in. But honestly, I think geolocation is really gonna change people's perspective of what Web3 and blockchain can do. Where we go and why we go places uh, is one of the easiest things, I think, to incentivize. And you know, whether it's to show up at this meetup or attend a concert or you know, show up at a pop-up shop that's only one weekend only, or you know, even set up different scavenger hunts that take you towards uh, sustainable areas or uh, you know, green buildings. We, we talked to a lot of different people that are really interested in the scavenger hunt space. I think that's a really cool concept of what geolocation and incentivizing people to see and experience things in the real world, not just click buttons in the digital world, it's gonna open up a brand new design space um, for IOTEX and for the Web3 industry. Um, starting with POP protocol, you know, proof of presence is a term that IOTEX has coined and is really championing. And it's because of our belief in what geolocation can do. You know, uh, Simone and Rowland already mentioned a couple of use cases about getting airdrops based on a geolocation. Say you're a token project, and you really want to incentivize a new community of Filipino or you know, European or even at a micro level, Denver participants to join your DApp. You can airdrop them um, tokens or airdrop them assets, uh, even credentials based on their geolocation, uh, which I think is a step change in how airdrops are done today. But um, the other really cool thing as the NFT space starts to boom, uh, you can tie certain NFTs to certain geolocations or geofences where you can claim NFTs only by being there, right? This is a, you know, you think about the minting model of NFTs and how hectic and uh, bot related it is, right? I remember back in the day when, you know, we used to line up for streetwear and that seemed like the most fair way to get a product, right? You stand there in line, you prove you were there instead of paying some bot to, uh, game the system. And I think with geolocation and pop protocol and Meta Pebble and Pebble and IOTEX in general, we can start to create these incentives for people to do certain things in the real world or visit certain places in order to get these NFTs. And I think this is a huge channel to bring Web2 or traditional companies into Web3, right? Everyone watched the Super Bowl, everyone's watching sporting events, claiming NFTs based on geofences. You heard it here first. I'm glad you like that one. I like it too. <laughs> and, um, you know, we're not supposed to mention too much about pop, but it's coming soon. It's coming very, very soon. Um, Lonely Planet is another one that um, is being built on IOTEX right now in a prototype form. Um, real world GPS location to fuel geo mining and incentivize local people to meet up, right? It's kind of similar to pop protocol, but um, this is an instance where you're not just airdropping or claiming NFTs, right? Pop protocol is more something you can build on top of. Lonely Planet is more of a D app where you can create your own tokenomics, right? The concept of Lonely Planet is for every zone, all these hexagons are zones, every zone that you're a part of, you can mine a token. The more people in your zone, the higher mining rates your zone will have, and the more zones you're a part of, the more tokens you can mine. Um, so, you know, the, the premise of Lonely Planet is to make the world less lonely to encourage you to meet people in your zones. You're coming out of COVID, hopefully everyone here is already meeting a lot of people and having fun. But around the world, you know, these are just thought experiments about how we can uh, use real world data and open incentives to you know, incentivize people to do things they wouldn't necessarily do on their own accord. That's the premise of Web3, in my opinion. Um, another really cool one, that was built by a project called London Blockchain Labs on top of IOTEX called HyperAware. HyperAware uses uh, IOTEX DID and Pebble Trackers. It's uh, still a prototype for now, but you're collecting vehicle tolls based on your geolocation. And it's built uh, by a team out of London. For those that have been to London before, there's something called the London Congestion Zone, where if you drive your car in downtown, you have to pay a fee. How they do it is when you enter, they'll take a picture of your license plate. When, they, when you leave, they'll take a picture of your license plate and they'll calculate the delta and they'll give you some 
fee, uh, some fee in the mail, right? So their concept was rather than doing this very uh, you know opaque and time-consuming process, let's use our verifiable GPS location in order to pay these tolls in an automated way from your blockchain wallet, right? Um, and this is a team that has built this uh, hyperware project. It's the same team that's building Astral Protocol. If you guys know them. Uh, very very cool stuff. Um, but you know, all these use cases are just one single metric of real world data, which is where are you, right? There's so many other questions about what you're doing on a day to day basis. You know, what types of things you've consumed in the future, right? When we think about the day in the life in the future. Um, Everything, you know, I ordered a lot of Uber Eats, you know, that's going to be automated in the future based on how I slept, right? Or what nutrients I lack. And as the world becomes more automated, you know, having trust and allowing us to use our data uh, to power our more digital lives is going to be super, super, super important. 